thank you, Lord, that you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. I thank you that we can praise you, we can worship you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, as we praise you, Lord God, we're being set free, Lord God. I thank you that we praise you in the morning, we praise you in the evening, and even when the sun goes down, Lord. I thank you for your Holy Spirit here, Lord God. I thank you that it's moving, Lord God, opening our ears to hear your voice this morning, Lord, through the message, Lord, through a conversation, through a handshake, Lord God. I thank you that none of my brothers and sisters are going to leave the same, Lord, but they're going to leave encouraged, Lord God, to continue moving on, picking up their cross and going forward, Lord God. I thank you for each and every individual here, Lord, and I thank you for those that will be watching, Lord, and again, we give you all the praise and all the glory, and the whole church says, Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? He's good all the time. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him when the sun goes down. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, that's our, it's not a heritage. It's our life. It's our life to praise him. Not, and Sunday is, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, well, you know, now you're seeing all kinds of um, electric stations and, and they need to charge up, right? And we get, we're going to be seeing more and more. You need to charge up. We, you know, or the gas station, we fill up, right? Well, that's what church is about. You, you charge up, you filled up. Now, somebody said, well, I'm already charged up. I'm already filled up. I don't need to come to church. Well, that's not what Jesus said by the Spirit. He said in Hebrews chapter 10, he says, some get in the habit of neglecting coming together. And that's not a healthy habit because see, you're, we're kingdom people, kingdom men, kingdom women, and kingdom children, too, and young people. We've been transformed by this God who came into our sphere. He's always, he's always been here. He created everything. He's holding it all together. The Bible says everything is held together by the word of God. And uh, like I had shared um, earlier, uh, we had some prayer in the back and about in our Thursday night men's uh, study. Or I don't know if I said it here. I'm, anyway, I'll say it again. Uh, you know, Jesus says, and now uh, carry a sword when you go out. Well, and, and we looked at in one commentary that that sword is a sword of the spirit. How can you how can you move people or even protect your family without the word of God going forth from your heart and taking action against strongholds? The Bible says we don't battle against flesh and blood with the sword, physical things, but with the word of God and the word of your testimony, the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. And so even this praise time that we had, it, even that's, that was wonderful. It's a tenderized time. But now you, too, might be going through stuff. We all do. We all do. And, and sometimes we just get overwhelmed. Life can be overwhelming. And Jesus says, yes, I know. He says, in me you will have peace. In this world, you will be overwhelmed. And I'll translate it. He said, you will have tribulation trials. But he said, be of good cheer because I've overcome it all. And where we overcome and become overcomers when we are in him. See, I'm not into religion. I, I want to go home if this is just a, a religious service. This is, no, I, I know a lot of the young people think, well, we're going to church. No, when, the, when the, you came and showed up, the church showed up. This building was here, and it looks like what we call a, a facade of a church. We get it. But the real church is you and I, and we gather together, and that's the beauty of Christianity. But, friends, I always like to, to do this. And this is, uh, Hank, this is, I'm kind of picking on Hank. He's new here. <laughs> uh, but, Hank, we call it uh, the wall uh, out of Ezekiel 22:30. He looked for someone to stand in the gap and, and, and build a wall because there's things in your life that you're going through. All of us do. You're thinking of, hey, this month's rent. You're thinking of family. You're thinking you could have done more. You could have done less. I, I don't know. But it's up to you. You think, well, Pastor, I hope you hit a home run. I, I only hit singles, friends. <laughs> Does that make sense? You know, it's baseball season, right? Next season's football season. I, I hope I throw a touchdown. I, I'm... I just want to be consistent, even if it's a single. And, but even with a single, you can win a game. Maybe even steal home. <laughs> there was a, on, last week, there was a guy that 
uh, it showed on, on, uh, on my website where this guy stole home. They weren't expecting it, and they won the game. You know, we win when we look to Jesus. When we have issues, we look to him. Well, you know, we, we have people around us. You're all ministers of the Most High. I am too. I happen to have a, an office as a pastor. But you see, you're ministers too. Every one of you think, well, I, I, don't, don't make me do anything I don't want to do. You won't. And God won't make you do nothing. You don't have to come to church. But he does ask you. He's asking out of Ezekiel 22, would you stand in the gap and pray for things that you're going through or others? We need each other. And we need to be people of prayer. And so uh, I would ask you to stand one more time. And I know that sometimes there's a, you know, even when our guest speaker comes up, there's going to be a spirit of slumberness. People are going to start to fall asleep. It's a time when we fall asleep. Uh, you know, it is. I'm sorry. We, we just, we just you know, well, next thing you know, we're, we're, we're out. It's like, wow. Uh, you know, but you can train yourself. You know, if someone very important were to come, you can train yourself, say, well, whether you like this president or not, if President Biden were to be here, do you think you'd be asleep on him when he gave a speech? You wouldn't. When our guest speaker comes, anybody, you could train yourself, I am not going to fall asleep. It's up to you. If Jesus were to stand here, Jesus would probably say the same thing. Yeah. So... Let's focus on Jesus, and I want to lead in a couple areas. And then I'm going to ask you, if you're going through anything, think where you're at. You're struggling. We all go through those moments. I am going through a couple things. You know, a major, well, I'm here. But the Lord wants to help me as well as you to get in your gap and build that wall with prayer and faith. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the worship we had to to celebrate you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To give the, the accolades, as you said, we can praise you back and bless God. And we bless you, Lord. And we thank you for always providing. There's people that are struggling with rents and and overhead. Lord, as you know, that many people go into debt. I I I get it, Lord. It just Lord, I pray, Lord, that their heart would be not just to receive blessings to meet those debt needs, but, Lord, they become givers to let their, the, whatever they give, Lord, become fruit that it will grow. Lord, those that are stingy planting their gardens will get stingy returns. So, Lord, I pray blessings on them that they become givers, that they may become great receivers and then continue to give like the Jordan River that flows in the beautiful Ga- Sea of Galilee. And then it flows into the Dead Sea, but the Dead Sea has no outflow. So it becomes dead. Open my eyes, Lord, to be a giver. Jehovah Jireh, you will provide, even when I feel like I don't have anything left. Bless your people. And, Lord, you are Jehovah Rapha. There's people that are going through areas that need physical healing. Lord, we've seen what you did with Elsa. Lord, where they opened her up and they couldn't find it. I pray, Lord, those that are going to be having operations, Lord, that even before they go, there become there be healings that's going on. I pray for Beth, who has cancer. I rebuke that cancer in the name of Jesus. I pray for Jenny Garcia, that you bless her, Lord, that she get the prosthetic leg, and Lord, heal that area of her life. For Scott, thank you for his healing in cancer. For uh, uh, Annette Mendoza, I rebuke that cancer as well, and I thank you for her healing. Lord, anyone else that's going through things that they said, well, I don't know know my business. Well, Lord, then let them talk to you this morning. Lord, you know their business. You know every hair on my head. And so, Lord, I thank you. And, Lord, you are so into unity. Lord, you're the first family, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus, you're one with the Father. Father, you're one with the Son and Holy Spirit. You too. And you don't take shifts and say, well, it's your turn, Holy Spirit. It's your turn, Father. No, you're, you're here, oh God. I can't, I can't describe you, I can't, other than I see in the person of Jesus what you did on the cross, and, and we have that picture of you, Jesus, so loving and gracious and willing to die for me. But to describe you, oh God, it's ludicrous, it's insanity. You hold this whole world together. And Lord, because of your unity, Lord, we are here and alive. 
And I pray for families. I pray for marriages. I pray for, for, for Lord, people in the church that are, that are struggling just to say, I'm not sure if this is the church for me. God, let them step out. And let them step out into a realm of being the first to say, hi, my name's Bob. My name's Betty. My name's Lucy. And, Lord, make this church, Lord, through us a friendly church. Now, Lord, more importantly, and not that those weren't important, but, Lord, we are going through stuff individually. I pray, Lord, that we would truly focus our attention, not fall asleep at this time of prayer, nor any time of this service, but that, Lord, we would give you our care. Friends, Jesus himself said, come to me, all you that labor in our or heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and I'm lowly in heart, and cast your care on me. Friends, we're going to take a moment of silence. You think where you're at, your family, friends, associates at work, in this church, your finances, whatever it might be, and give it to the Lord. Take a few seconds of, of devotion, you personally, before the Lord, and cast your care on him, please, for your sake. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for drawing us closer to you and one another. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone will say amen. amen. Tell the person next to you, glad to see them. afternoon. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Just a, a few announcements. Again, I just want to encourage uh, the women tomorrow night. Uh, they will be meeting for the women's Bible study at seven o'clock via Zoom. Uh, if you have any questions, you can see either uh, Sister Lana or my wife Bessie up here. Again, uh, Sister Laura's not here. She's taking care of some personal business. But remember, be encouraged. Get on. I encourage the women, get on the Zoom. You don't have to participate, but just listen. And I, I guarantee you'll grow. Just like on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock downstairs, the men's Bible study, it's, it's great. It's awesome. We're learning. Pastor learned something new on Thursday night. Well, we're all learning. But, you know, to, it's kind of amazing to hear Pastor like, I never saw that before. And pastor tells you how many times he reads the Bible. So that's why I'm saying God speaks in different times all the time. Amen. But we got to take that initiative to read. And that's how we grow as men. We're hearing different um, opinions, thoughts of what we're learning out of the Word. So men, I encourage you to come on Thursday night at 7. And prayer on Wednesday night here at 7 o'clock. Again, I can't tell you how important prayer is. Prayer is so awesome. God is answering prayers, even if we don't see it. He's answering prayers even in our, in our nation, even though we see how much darkness is going on. Let me give you an example. We stand with Love Life every third Saturday. They go out every Saturday, and it's to pray for the unborn child. 
California was going to have the first clinic in L.A. called the DuPont Clinic. It was supposed to be a spa-like abortion clinic for ladies. Massages, all this and that. Beverly Hills uh, manager called to say they're not going to go forward with it because people are praying against that. That's what I'm talking about. When we come in unity, there's power in prayer like that. Don't think, well, Pastor and, and Sister Laura and whoever's there, they'll pray. That's good enough. No. The more we have, the stronger we are in our prayers to be answered. You don't see a football team just with, with four people. There's a bunch of guys because it makes a unity strong. That's why we encourage you to come out on prayer on Wednesday nights. I guarantee if you come one Wednesday, you'll be touched. But it takes you to get out of your comfort zone, to get out of whatever you are, you're in to come. If it's because your program's on a Wednesday night, DVR it. And I guarantee you'll be blessed. But on that note, also pray, continue to pray for our nation. I just saw yesterday Arizona is going to open up a, a middle school for LGBTQ students. That's what I'm saying. Those are the things we pray against. We've got to pray for our police officers. They're under attack. Our military, our pastors are going to be under attack if we don't stand in the gap and start praying and interceding for this nation. Amen? Pray, and on that, pray for the homeless ministry. And again, if you want to get involved with the homeless, see Sister Lana. You know, if you don't want to go out with her but you want to donate, talk to her on that as well. Um, anything else? Nothing? Pastor? Amen. So just remember that. And again, if you need an, uh, an envelope, um, see Brother Jesse if you want to give your tithes and offering. But we are going to go into tithes and offering this morning. And again, I can't stress, you can never outgive God. The more you give to God, the more he's going to give back to you. Amen. Don't worry about inflation or anything like that. God will provide when you take that step of faith, and we have a box back there we can give your tithes and offering or even to missions, whatever it is. Don't think it's going to Pastor Bob. It's going to the church. Because when we give, guess what? We get blessed. How? Because sometimes, you know, there's food downstairs, right? Walmart donates a lot of food every week to us. That's how we get blessed. We have lights. We have AC. Trust me, I've been in churches with no AC. It's not fun sitting in an in a hour and a half service, sweating. But that's what I'm saying. It's not for pastor. It's for you and I when we give our tithes and offering. So, again, let's just pray for our morning tithes and offering this morning. Lord, again, we thank you and we praise you, Father God, that we had the opportunity, Lord, to sow into your kingdom, Lord God. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, as we sow into your kingdom, Lord God, that your glory, Lord, will be shone around the world, Lord God, and touching those that need that touch, Lord God, and even blessing those in this church that need to be blessed, Lord God. Lord, and I thank you that you bless those that are, that are giving, Lord God. And I thank you especially for those that aren't able to give. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the whole church says, amen. Thank you, man. Yep. Yeah, thank you again last week for uh, um, the, we had our church picnic, and it was neat to see. Uh, we had the biggest showing of people for one baptism for little Cheyenne. It was huge. And a lot of, you know, it seemed like everybody was there. It was neat. But um, it was a, a wonderful time, and I know that a lot of people were, were out of town, couldn't make it. But praise the Lord, we're, we're having a picnic today, right, with each other, right? We may not have to be out in San Dimas Canyon Park, but yeah, amen. So um, uh, about uh, two months ago, uh, my friend Lana uh, Gonzalez, uh, she graduated from uh, the Western Ministry Institute in our district and she, it was about a two-year journey and she just ate it up she can't seem to get enough of jesus and that's the way i think the no more christian life should be we can never get enough of god it's like are you, oh, i'm filled up you know? and anyway she has she has been one of my dearest friends for well for a long long time and she works with uh the samaritan out homeless ministry, her and her son, and anyone else who wants to join. We're always praying that when you go out there, you know, as you know, the fields are white with homeless. Is it a pretty sight? It's not. It's, it's, it's just not. But 
we go with the word of God, and she does, and we go out every quarter as a, whoever can go, and, and even there, um, it's not a comfortable step. We're going to try to go out this next Saturday, and even my daughter, my granddaughter, Sophie, is, is going out. She's working on a project for her senior project in high school, how to touch uh, the homeless and what we can do. We give them Jesus, and we pray that they would get a revelation and even be set free. And that's what Lana does. She does that with her son every other week. They try to. And uh, we're so so proud of you, Lana. And when I say proud, not that you're proud, look at me, but that, that you're willing to enter into this realm of ministry, which is not easy. And she's going to bring the word. So would you come on up, Lana? And we're going to hear what the Holy Spirit put in her heart. She has uh, several of her family members here. Yes. And um, let me pray with her real quick. Lord, I thank you for Lana. I thank you for her family and her friends that are here, those that are viewing. Lord, we, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to speak through her, uh, this, this humble handmaid, just like you did Mary Magdalene, which is the first woman to preach the gospel. He's alive. He's risen. And the great Peter goes running back to the tomb, the empty tomb, because of this Mary Magdalene the first gospel preacher. Lord, let this gospel preacher just touch our hearts too, like Mary did Peter and John. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Can I have one of those? Oh, yeah. Here you go. Here you go. Well, let's get you set up here. Good morning. Can you all hear me? Yes. Or do I have to speak louder? <laughs> okay. Well, good morning. Welcome. Um, a lot of faces, beautiful faces. Thank you. Um, let me just add on to that prayer, Pastor Bob. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, that I deny myself that the Holy Spirit will rise within me to bring forth the word. Let the words that forth come forth from my mouth be of yours, Holy Spirit. As I deny myself, Father God, and open up the hearts once again to everyone to hear, Father God, your word that you put on my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> okay, so I was praying and praying for a while and asking the Lord, what message would you like me to bring to the church? And after hearing... confirmation, it was more than one or two more confirmations, about four or five confirmations, and I go, okay, Lord, all right, so I'm going to bring it, and um, the message that the Lord put on my heart is, is on evangelism, which is also known as the Great Commission. Evangelism and how important it is to share the good news of salvation, forgiveness, and grace. God justified us through redemption in Christ. We went from sinners deserving punishment and death to children of God saved by grace. God also saved us from the bondage of sin so that we can turn away from sin and honor him. God also saved us from the bondage of sin so that we can turn to him. Understand that Jesus didn't just get rid of the punishment. He took it for everyone. And because of this gift, we have a relationship with God through faith. Amen. I look in the room this morning. We're children of God. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. You go in the store, your brothers and sisters are there shopping. You go to the gas station, you have brothers and sisters filling up gas. You go to work, there's still brothers and sisters. We're all brothers and sisters. Especially my friends who live on the street, those are our brothers and sisters. We can't look at them any differently. Evangelism is a crucial step of obedience to God in his call to go and make disciples. 
Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As believers, as children of God, we have a job description. We all, some of us work, we have a description of what we have to do, the do's and don'ts. But our job description, description like myself, as security officers, I have to do this. Others who work maybe are retired. We all have job description. Even those who are retired, the husbands listen to their wives. They have a job description to go mow the lawn, go paint the room, right? Right? Okay? Right, Julie? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so our job description as Christians, as believers, is to be the salt and the light amid a fallen world. Jesus has anointed us with the Holy Spirit to run to the lost, not run from them, to run to them, not from them. We can't look at the lost through the lenses of fear, prejudice, or bias. Because if we do, we're running away from the people Jesus has called us to reach. He also called us to be ready to share his love, grace, and truth. This world is bombarded with consequences of sin. Everywhere we turn, we see the effects of a fallen world. In our communities, our school, our families, yes, and our brothers and sisters on the street. Whatever choice they made, they're there. Doesn't mean that we just shove them move them out of the way or ignore them or don't see them. I know we all see them. I know we all see them. No matter where we go, we see them. When we go out as a, on the church outreach every three months, we pass out the Romans Road. Romans Road is a track that has these verses on a church outreach, we pass them out. Oh, I'm sorry about that, but. So we pass out these tracts. They're little tracts, little pieces of paper, and on the title of it, in the front page, it says Romans Road. Romans Road. Romans 5, 8. God demonstrated his love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6, 23 is my favorite. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life with Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Acts 4, 12, there is none, nor is there any salvation in any other, for there is no other name in heaven given among by which man must be saved. That little track we pass out. If you're interested to maybe pass out those out to your family members, somebody at the gas station, I know John is pretty good because he talks to a lot of people. He goes up to them and that's great. That's a gift. That is a gift, John. If you'd like to have a track or so, just let me know at the end and I can give you a couple of tracks so you can pass them out. Because where I'm going with this now is is evangelism, the great mission, great commission. And we all have family members who are not saved. We all have family members who are knuckleheads. Maybe we have family members who are doing time in prison or in jail. Or maybe we have children in the probation department. I don't know. We all have family members who walked away from their faith. We all have family members that are doing dumb things. We can't look at them and judge them. We can't do that. We have to love them like God loved us because right here, big time, big time at the day. I, that's why I have a hard time. I can't judge a homeless person. I even can't judge my family members. And I have a lot of family members. I can't judge them. I love them because that's what God called us to do is love them, not judge them or shame and blame anybody. We can't do that. <clears throat> God showed me this picture this morning. I was waking up, and oh, Lord, I got seven more minutes, please. I just closed my eyes. 
and there was a map. And on that map, it showed a gas station, it showed Costco, I kid you not. It showed a store, it, showed, it had like pinpoints. I'm going, okay, I open my eyes, I go, wow. Okay, just keep that in mind, da, 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 okay? Here are some easy ways, six simple ways to evangelize, to share the gospel with your friends, with your neighbors, with your co-workers. Where, where's Hector? Is that him back there? Is that his name, Victor? No, Victor's not here. No, the guy, the gentleman back there. Hey. Yeah. Hank. Hank. Hi, Hank. <laughs> Welcome. Were you invited? No? You've been here before? No? First time? Yes. Well, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Because that's number one, to invite a person to church. This is the simplest way to evangelize when you invite somebody to church. The simplest way. Because by inviting somebody to church, they're going to sit in the pew and they're going to listen to the word of God. They're going to see the body of Christ interacting with love, with, well, with loving with one another. They're going to hear the prayers being lifted up. They're going to feel the Holy Spirit. To invite somebody to church is the simplest way to evangelize. Another way is to share your testimony. We all, we're all walking testimonies, Amen. right? Amen. We all have something to, to share. By sharing your testimony with a non-believer, family, friend, co-worker, neighbor, brother or sister living on the streets, or somebody from California going back to Florida, where you two stop a lot, there you go. Share your testimony, right? Your testimony of how, share your testimony of how the gospel has saved your life and brought you into a relationship with God. Amen. Remember, you have to be verbally, remember, to, you have to verbally give Jesus all the credit and affirm the truth of who he is. Otherwise, you're just reminiscing, not witnessing. John 4, 28 through 30, and also verse 39. The woman then left, water pot, left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. Verse 39, and many of the Samaritans, that city, believed in him. Because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. Two. Be friendly, polite, and approachable. Be friendly, polite, and approachable. Amen. Proverbs 15, 1 and 2. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge of rightly, but the mouth of the fools pours out foolishness. Proverbs eleven thirty: The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is as wise we have to be friendly and polite and approachable. When out in the streets, when we go out there, it's, I, I love doing, by God's grace, that he gave me this ministry. When he called me, I said yes. And I thank God because when we go out there as a church or just my son and I, it's beautiful. I can do that all day long just sharing the word of God with them. We've come, we've come across a lot of things, uh, but I will not judge them. I love them. I present the gospel to them. Do you need prayer? Some of them, oh, I don't want nothing to do with them, stuff like that, you know, but I don't give up because I'll see them again. Right, Alex? We'll see them again. 
and they memorize, they, they know who we are out there in Pomona, they do. Um, there's a lot that I've seen last two weeks ago, or last two weeks ago, there's people I haven't even seen in a long time out there. There's some that are new. But to go up there and to be polite and friendly with them and approachable, yeah. If you hang out with people who aren't saved or as you interact with them, remember to be friendly, polite, and approachable. This is what, this is what provides opportunities to, de to des deposit spiritual needs with strangers, friends, acquaintances, or people you see regularly. More opportunities equal more conversations. And more conversations equals more opportunities to share your testimony. You know, when you share your testimony, mine takes forever. <laughs> mine will take, what, three months? <laughs> My soul, yeah, but some of us have testimonies where you can only take maybe an hour or so. You know, you can pick and choose whatever you want to say in your testimony, but in reality, don't, because that maybe there's something in there that you took out of your testimony where that person needs to hear. Right. Number three, when you're sharing the gospel, explain to your listeners, while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us, and by grace through faith, we have been saved. Love them by listening to them and understanding who they are and where they're coming from. When you put yourself in your listener's shoes, you, are better, you will better understand how to speak the gospel into their life. Hear their needs and love them as Christ has loved you. So even sharing a testimony or inviting a person to church, that's great, it's beautiful. When you're out in the street sharing your testimony within your family members, yeah. Because we want none. We don't, I want to see all my family in heaven. Amen. I have my family here, some of them, but I want to see all of them in heaven. Amen. I don't want to see none left behind. I just like that, though. I, lo I like that because opportunities are more conversations. You know, the opportunities we have is every three months, too, as well, to go out, to pass out a lunch. But most of all, like I explained to the homeless, here's your backpack, but before I give you the backpack full of goodies and water, I bring the gift of God, the love that he has for you. We tell them God loves you. We want them to see Christ in us. And that also goes for your unsafe family members and friends. When you share the gospel to your list, oh, I'm sorry, I went that way, right? I'm nervous. <laughs> Number four, in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. I read that over and over, and I go, what? I read it again, but I go, wow. Before you go out to share your testimony or to the homeless, pray. Pray. Prayer is a vital part of a Christian walk. We all know that, right? Our God is the God of salvation who hears our prayers and provides strength and wisdom in our time of need. Pray that the Lord would open the hearts of your unbelieving friends, family, and our brothers and sisters who will live in the streets so that they too would be receptive to the gospel. Evangelism without consistent prayer is like a net with a hole in it. Consistency, prayer, for the people you've witnessed is how you anchor your evangelism. This does not guarantee they will get saved. It just means 
you're making sure your part of the witness is completely covered, then leaving the results to the one who does the internal work, Amen. the Holy Spirit. Yes. Pray. We pray before we go out. I pray the week before. Uh, we packed the bags on Friday um, because... Like I said, being out there, or maybe you have family members too. That, this, is, this, this message is for the, our brothers and sisters in the streets, as well as family members and friends and co-workers. It, it's all the people all together, okay? Opportunities to serve the lost. Opportunities to serve the lost. Matthew 25, 35 to 36. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. When you're out there on the streets evangelizing or in, with your family members or friends or co-workers, Remember that they're lost and broken people. We cannot, and I, I keep, it just keeps coming back to me, we cannot judge people. We cannot judge. Because God didn't judge us. He didn't. We cannot judge our family members. Well, look what they're doing. Blah, 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 blah. You love them. You love them. You pray for them. Just like the homeless, you pray for them. And our children, our, uh, the, the little ones that just went back there and our kids. The, chi- the children that are here. They see mom and dad or aunt and uncle, grandpa and grandma ministering to somebody. That little child's going to pick it up. Because those little kids back there and the, and the kids with Barbara or in the nursery, th- those are our next generation. Right. And how are they going to lead if we don't show them an example? We have to be that example to them so they can see. Because I sure want my, kid, my grandkids to, to one day do the same what I'm doing, what God had called me to do. I want my grandchildren to do that. My grandchildren do come on Friday nights, and I encourage all the children here too as well to come. The Friday night before the Saturday, we go to our outreach. So our outreach is going to be in October, the second week. So that Friday, bring your children. I know Becky has. Bring them so they can fill up the bag. And you pray over the food and the little stuff that we put in that bag so they know. So that Holy Spirit can minister to their hearts when they grow older. Amen. Let's not shield them from, yeah, we shield them from all uh, the danger, but you know, hey, when you're out there driving around or driving to your friends or, or your unsafe family members or to work, carry some water. If it's too much to pull over and get the water out of the trunk of your car, put it in the back seat. A little bag full of water. Why not? Maybe some snacks. And if you have your children in there, just, there you go. Because a lot of people that I've come across who are homeless, they have never did anything to us. Never threatened us, never pulled anything out on us, never. We can't forget about our brothers and sisters out there or our family members or friends, or co-workers, we can't forget them. We need to demonstrate Jesus and his love for them. Remember, there's an opportunity every three months to help a hurting brother and sister with God's love. We never know if we come across an angel or Jesus himself. The purpose of witnessing is to share God's love and the gospel. The ultimate goal is for the lost to come to Jesus. And that lost... To come to Jesus is the homeless, our unsafe friends, our family members, our co-workers that we all know. And maybe we have them in our families. Number six, go out and do it. Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus is with you. You and I. He's with us. 
the creator of heaven and earth. We are the light for Jesus. No matter how well you know the gospel, sharing your faith with someone can sometimes feel intimidating. Don't worry. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit will be with us, and he will give you the words to speak. In closing, witnessing is where spiritual seeds, and you mentioned this, <laughs> he took my thunder, Pastor. <laughs> witnessing is where spiritual seeds are deposited in people's minds, hearts, and lives, and eventually wheat. Some witnesses deposit, other witnesses, means us, other witnesses weep what was already deposited. But it is God who sends the laborers to plant seeds. It is God who cultivates the seeds. It is God who produces the harvest. It is God who sends the laborers to weep his harvest. And it is God who gets all the glory. He's looking. The fields are white. He's looking. Who can be my next person? Let's not just sit back in our comfort zone and listen to God. Oh, you're not, I don't hear you telling me to go do this and do that. I don't hear it. I don't hear it. A lot of us go to Costco. I know my family members do. Barbara does. People go to Costco. People go to Walmart. People go to stores, right? Malls. Perfect time, perfect area, perfect crowd. Why not? Why not, Julie? Why not, girl? Why not go out there? Let's do this. Don't wait for Jesus to say, okay, uh, Mary, saw him, so Tom, Jerry, whatever, Mary. Don't wait for God. So you know what? Yeah, I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to help in the, in the ministry. I'm going to help to come back back. I'm going to help to go out there. I want to see how it is and what, what what's this all is all about, the outreaches. I want to do that. I want to go to Costco and have my Bible tracks. Would you like one? You know, it takes 30 seconds to share the Lord, to share all about what he has done in your life. You pick and choose in your testimony the important things that would help somebody to come to Jesus. And as we go and witness, if people don't come or don't receive the gospel, that's okay. Don't see it as a loss. It's still a success because shared, or you, it's still a success because you shared, or you extended the invitation. You have no idea what strand on the web of evangelism you may be in someone's life. Remember, God's the one behind the scene orchestrating it all. We just do our part of sharing and demonstrating God's love and the good news. And I will leave this with you. Don't simply look at evangelism as something you do like a shore. Don't look at it like a shore. But as the mission you are on. Yes, it's every Christian's mission. But by personalizing it, you take ownership of it. It's your mission, our mission. So I'm going to ask you to repeat after me, okay? Uh -huh. Evangelism. Evangelism. One more time. Evangelism. Evangelism. Is, my my is my mission. mission. Evangelism, Evangelism is my mission. Amen. Thank you, guys. You know, 
this is uh, Christianity 101, and when we come into the kingdom, we begin. That's the first thing, really, we do in, in our Christian walk. Uh, Jesus says that uh, if we confess him before men, he'll confess us before the Father. And one of the things what we do is tell people what we have Jesus. And after we have him, the, it seems like the flame gets lower. Mm. And it's the pastor's job, or it's somebody like this that's going to go out to the highways and the byways. So, well, I can't do this. That's not my thing. But we all are called to share this love it, at, in our home, at work, wherever. And not that we would be odious to others. Well, here they come again. No, it's just like Lana said, in an open conversation, somehow sharing this good news. Jesus is coming back. I, one thing I like about the Calvaryites, Calvary chapels, is they picked up that mantra, Maranatha. It's a Latin word, Lord, come. Mm -hmm. Lord, come. He's coming back. And he will one day come back and ask us, well, what do we do? He's given us talents. And one, one day he's going to say, well, Bob, I gave you one talent. What would you do? Well, I said, well, Lord, I just, you know, I, I buried it and because I, I know that you want it back. He says, no, no, I wanted you to invest it. One talent. There's some people like Jack Hibbs, Calvary Chapel Chino, he's got... Ten talents and God just because he keeps investing. But he also, Jack's calling is to encourage like she just did to us. Go out. Share this. Don't be religious in it. Just be mm -hmm. relational. Be a friend to your neighbor and your family. Because God, he wants, the Bible says this, he wants none. First Peter. First Peter, I believe it's, uh, I believe it might be uh, three. He says, God wants none to perish. If you have the son, you have life. If you don't have the son, you don't have life. But that's harsh, isn't it? Mm. Why? Well, how can you say that? Because God, if you don't love God, I mean, how can you go into heaven? How, if you don't believe in him, how can you get to heaven? That's why God is going to use every one of us to share that seed with Lana. Thank you, Lana. That mm -hmm. was beautiful. Would you stand with me, please? And you that are viewing, and I'll just close with this, and I just want to say this, too. Jesus himself said, the kingdom of God is this. You repent and believe in the Son of God. That's the gospel. You repent and you believe in him. And the scripture goes on. She's shared some of it up here in Romans chapter 10. That you believe that he died on this cross and rose the third day. And those that call upon the name of the Lord from their heart will be saved. And if you've never done that in this room or you that are viewing, we don't want religion. But when you call on the name of the Lord, you will have him. And it's that simple. Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I made mistakes. And when you do that with all your heart, the Bible says you call on his name, Jesus. There's no other name given among men whereby men may be saved. The name of Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this message. It was refreshing. It, Lord, it's one we haven't heard in a long time. The Great Commission. Lord, that was a home run. I thank you for that. Because, Lord, we, we needed that. We need that, Lord. I need that. To not be afraid to go to the highways and byways and tell them to come on in. There's a wedding feast to happen. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time. And, Lord, I pray blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he also give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. We'll see you downstairs. There's a whole lot of food down.